About four years ago, I quit my job to basically go freelance or indie or become an author or really I didn't have much of a plan. I did have practical combine out and I had plans to write a book on core data and I kind of figured that the worst thing that could happen is nothing pans out the way I hoped it would and I would just go back to having a job. It's been four years now and things are going well. Um, I'm doing freelance work, I'm doing uh, my books, I'm doing workshops, I'm doing this, I'm doing a lot of different kinds of projects. And one thing over the past four years that has consistently been pretty difficult to deal with is staying productive. When you're working for somebody, there's always somebody that you're accountable to, right? Somebody is going to ask you what have you been up to today? Where is this thing that you were supposed to work on? There's going to be deadlines. You really, you have a form of accountability. Once you quit your job, all that goes out the door. You're an independent person now, and it's up to you to figure out how you're going to do everything that you need to do. So for me, this has always been sort of a thing to try and figure out how do I, as a now independent developer, manage my productivity. In this video, I'm going to share some of the things that I do, some of the things that I tried, and some of the ways that I try and make sure that I don't procrastinate the entire day. If you're interested in learning more about being a programmer, a developer, an iOS developer, working with Swift and all of these things, make sure to like and subscribe. And let's get into it. The first thing that I always try and do is plan my day. It all starts with planning for me. If I don't plan, I don't work. It's really as simple as that. I know that it sounds weird. Uh, there's always something to do and I can do whatever I want. But if I don't plan, I get nothing done. For example, if on a Friday afternoon I decide I've done enough for the week, I'm done, I'm going to take a break, and I don't sort of wrap things up nicely, on Monday what might happen is I start the day by trying to figure out where I left off on Friday. So half my day is spent on that, finishing some tasks, doing whatever I need to do, and then I didn't plan anything. So basically the rest of the Monday is gone. Tuesday comes along, and now I have to start planning my week on Tuesday where I'm supposed to be doing that on Monday. What essentially happens is that I start running circles around myself, and I keep trying to figure out what to do. As soon as I don't do that, and as soon as I plan things on Monday, no matter how excited I am to work on something, no matter what I left on Friday, if I plan my week on Monday, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I know exactly what's coming up. I know which meetings are coming. I know which clients to invoice and all of these things. And I just become magically more productive. If I don't know what's next, it's so easy to procrastinate because I know what I'm supposed to do. There's always something to do for the blog. There's always a video to record. But if I didn't plan that, if I didn't write that down, then for some reason my brain just decides you could as well mess around on social media for a bit. And I want to avoid that. So planning is a key part of my strategy. Um, it helps me know what's next. It helps me know what I'm supposed to be focusing on. It helps me write down what's the most important thing I should be doing this week. And it really allows me to keep track of what's happening. And that brings me to the second productivity hack that I'm kind of experimenting with as we speak. Working from home, we've been all doing that since like 2020. And overall, it's great, especially when you're independent. It's really nice that you can run your own business from a home office. You don't need to hire somewhere expensive. You can just be at home all the time. I have two young kids. It's really cool to be around them all the time. But at the same time, it blurs those lines between home and work. For some people, that means that they have problems switching off. They're at home, but they're still working all the time. For other people like me, it can mean that switching on can be really hard because I like being home. I like being with my kids. I like doing stuff in the yard. I like sort of, you know, doing home stuff. And to then decide I'm going to work now to just do that and not be at home for a while, even though you are in your house, it's pretty tough. Some weeks it works really well, other weeks it works horribly and I procrastinate a lot. So what I'm trying is finding a place to work and usually it could even mean 
moving to another room, moving to the dinner table, going to some coffee shop, a co-working space, all these kinds of things can really help you figure out what works for you. And for a lot of people, it's not even about finding the perfect place. It's about switching it up a little bit, challenging your brain to be like, this is a new environment. Let's be productive in this new environment. See how that goes. And you're suddenly more productive just because you're in a new room. So that's something to try out. You need to figure out your environment. You need to figure out where you work from, how long you'll work for, and all these things. Finding out how to do that takes time because you want to give every change that you make sufficient time to actually settle in. And um, you can't change this every day because you're really not trying to get into a routine then. So finding out what environment works for you has been key, at least in my process, is how do I figure out when and where to work from? And how do I schedule all that? And how do I plan all that? So it's planning, finding an environment to work in. And lastly, this is one that I started doing at the beginning of 2025, basically since January or more, maybe December 2024. Um, tracking your work, right? So I started using GitHub to plan my weeks, to basically make tickets, to have a sense of what I'm doing, what the bigger picture is, and also to be able to look back and see what I've done. And that's a really big one because sometimes a week will feel really productive, but you didn't get much done or the other way around. You feel like you've been procrastinating a lot. You feel like you basically call it a day at like 3 p.m. every day of the week, but somehow you didn't get a ton of stuff done. And so being able to see that is really, really useful. And I also made myself a little app this last quarter that helps me track my work in a different way. Uh, I love working with Pomodoro timers. So it's 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 on, five off, and repeat that a bunch of times. I try and do like 10 a day. And one problem that I always had was I never really knew what I worked on and how I felt about the day. So it really kind of became this thing at the end of the day where I'm like, I think I had a good day, but I'm not sure. And so I made this app that allows me to have the Pomodoro running. And then when the Pomodoro is active, I can just do my work. At the end of the Pomodoro, there's a little pop-up that says, what did you do? Summarize the last 25 minutes. And I can rank it with a star rating, one through five, to basically tell myself how productive I felt. And that really helps me see at the end of the day how I felt throughout the day. And I also have some graphs in the app that show um, uh, how many Pomodoros you did every day. And I want to expand that to also show you sort of an average rating for every day, for the entire week, for a month, whatever. And I hope what that will do is it'll help me get some insights into when I work best. Because sometimes it feels like you sit down to work in the morning because you're supposed to, but it's really hard to get started. So maybe um, I will find out some patterns around when that happens for me and maybe I can make decisions based on that. So that's sort of going to be my future thing with um, planning work. In any case, these are the three things that I do as an indie developer to keep myself productive. That's uh, making sure that I plan things, making sure that I find the right environment to do my work in and track my work, right? It sounds silly to have tickets for yourself, but it's really, really useful. If you're interested in that Pomodoro app that I just talked about, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. And I hope this is useful for you, whether you're an indie developer already or you're thinking about it. Um, it is a journey. It is not something where I think there's a one size fits all solution, but you can definitely set yourself up for success. So I hope this was useful for you. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.